In chapter 9, Marx is clarifying some definitions of concepts and formulas that he will use throughout the rest of the book, while also highlighting some real-life implications of the things that have been discussed in the previous few chapters. That the love of lucre induces an easy belief in such miracles, and that sycophant doctrinaires are never wanting to prove them, is vouched for by the following incident of historical celebrity. In Marx's era, the majority of the working class in England, including women and young children, worked very long hours in incredibly dangerous factories. Throughout the 1830s, there had been a large amount of political agitation by the working class, trying to shorten the length of the working day for some industries. The capitalist class at the time were obviously very much against this shortening of the working hours, arguing that it would make them lose their profits and that if people weren't in work, they would be less pure of mind. Children's morals would be corrupted and they would be getting into trouble instead. Nassau Williams Sr. was a predominant lawyer and economic advisor to the government at the time and a friend to the capitalist class. He argued and built a legal case that essentially all capitalist production only made profits during the last hour of the day and a shortening of 11 and a half hours to 10 and a half hours would remove all profits from capitalist production completely. In this chapter, Marx argues against Senior to prove why this is incorrect. But to understand why, we'll first have to clarify and understand a few of Marx's arguments a little further. The surplus value generated in the process of production by C, the capital advanced, or in other words, the self-expansion of the value of the capital C, presents itself for our consideration. In the first place as a surplus, as the amount by which the value of the product exceeds the value of its constituent elements. To start, Marx is going to simplify some of his previous arguments in a more formulaic way. Small c is the constant capital that is advanced by the capitalist, the value or money they need to pay for all the means of production for the production process. V is the variable capital that is advanced by the capitalist, the value or money they need to pay for the labour power for the production process. Marx also refers to this as necessary labour. It's the time needed for labour to reproduce itself or earn its living. Capital C is the total capital advanced by the capitalist, the value or money they need to pay for the means of production and the labour power. So we can say that the total capital advanced is equal to the constant capital plus the variable capital, or capital C equals small c plus v. S equals the surplus labour, or that period of the day where surplus value is created, that period of the day where profits are created. And C prime is the total value of the final product. It is the greater amount of capital than was originally advanced, now embodied in the product. So we can now say that the total value of the final product is the amount of constant capital that was originally advanced, plus the amount of variable capital that was originally advanced, plus the amount of surplus value that is created during surplus labour. Or C prime equals C plus V plus S. We can see this another way by saying that S equals C prime minus C, or that surplus value and by extension the amount of surplus labour is equal to the total value of the final product minus the total capital that was originally advanced. So if the value of the final product is £100 and the total capital that was originally advanced was £80, the surplus value is £20. During the second period of the labour process, that in which his labour is no longer necessary labour, the workman, it is true, labours, expands labour power. But his labour, being no longer necessary labour, he creates no value for himself. He creates surplus value which, for the capitalist, has all the charms of a creation out of nothing. Today, when we talk of exploitation, we usually do so in the context of terrible working conditions or horrible bosses, child slavery or little to no wages being paid for work. This isn't exactly what Marx means, however. Exploitation here, for Marx, is the specific amount of time that a labourer is working 
but their value is going elsewhere, to the capitalist. It's the period of a day that a worker is creating surplus value within the labour process, and that period when they are not getting an equal exchange for the value they create. Marx calls this period surplus labour. To put this another way, the worker spends one part of their day in which they produce value equivalent to the value of their labour power. This, all else being equal, they would do anyway if they worked for themselves. But working for the capitalist, they also work part of the day beyond this limit, during which the value they create is surplus value. This surplus value is of course nothing but crystallised labour. We are then able to calculate the degree of exploitation like this. If we call the part of the working day spent producing the value equivalent to the value of labour power, necessary labour, or V, and the part dedicated to producing surplus value, surplus labour, or S, we arrive at rate of surplus value equals surplus labour divided by necessary labour, or rate of surplus value equals S divided by V. This is just a rather overly complex and long-winded way of Marx saying that we can calculate the percentage rate of surplus value and thus the rate of exploitation by dividing the amount of surplus labour done in a day by the amount of necessary labour done in a day. If we work for 12 hours a day, 6 hours of necessary labour and 6 hours of surplus labour, then S divided by V or 6 divided by 6 is 1 or 100% as a comparison rate. So of the 6 hours necessary labour, an equal 100% is exploited by the capitalist. If we think of this in monetary terms, if we were paid £50 a day for our necessary labour and the capitalist earns £50 a day from our surplus value, then S divided by V or 50 divided by 50 is 1 or 100%. Likewise, if, for example, we worked 9 hours a day, 6 hours of necessary labour and 3 hours of surplus labour, then S divided by V or 3 divided by 6 is 0.5 or 50% rate of exploitation. It's worth noting that this does not tell us about the magnitude of surplus value. A working day of just 2 hours with 1 hour producing surplus value still gives the same rate of exploitation 100% as our 12 hour day with 6 hours producing surplus value. Let us return to our hat maker and say that they make 20 hats in a 12 hour working day. Their necessary labour amounts to 6 hours and the surplus labour 6 hours, giving us a rate of surplus value of 100%. We will say the finished value of all 20 hats being sold together is £30. Now we'll say, for our example, that 80% of this value, £24 or 16 hats, represents the reappearance of the value of the means of production, or the constant capital that was advanced. The remaining two tenths or 20%, six pound or four hats, represents the new value created in the labour process, half of which, three pounds or two hats, stands as the equivalent of the value of the labour power. Another half, three pounds or two hats, is the surplus. We can represent the finished hats like this. Constant capital or the means of production equals 24 pounds, which is equal 16 hats. Labour power equals 3 pounds, which is equal to 2 hats. The surplus is also 3 pounds, which is also equal to 2 hats. But this dreadful last hour about which you have invented more stories than have the millenarians about the Day of Judgment is all bosh. If it goes, it will cost neither you, your net profit, nor the boys and girls whom you employ their purity of mind. Whenever your last hour strikes in earnest, think of the Oxford professor. And now, gentlemen, farewell, and may we meet again in yonder better world, but not before. Marx now looks at this another way, to get to the heart of why Senior's argument is wrong. The worker, 
produces 20 hats in one 12 hour day. They produce therefore 16 hats in nine and a half hours, an equal amount of value to the value of all 20 rolls of cotton and tools they started with, value for value. The next hour and 15 minutes, they produce two hats worth three pounds, a value equal to the whole value they created in their six hours of necessary labor. In the last hour and 15 minutes, the famous last hour that Senior argues creates all profit, the worker produces another two hats, whose value is equal to the surplus created over the course of half the day. Looking at it this way then, it does appear that the entire surplus comes within that last one hour and 15 minutes. And it would seem obvious that by shortening the day by one hour, it would remove all the capitalist profit. But this is a grave mistake to make, and one that the capitalists were making because they were missing the obvious. The value of the constant capital are not being created by the laborer. The value already exists within it from past labor. Their values were already invested in by the capitalists themselves before production even began. The capitalists viewed it as if the laborer first had to somehow repay this value before the labor process even begins, when in reality, every hour of the working day, the laborer is simply transferring the existing value of constant capital to the product continually. Further, it is only while he labors that he produces any value at all, and the amount of his labor is measured by his labor time. This, you say, amounts to 11 and a half hours a day. He employs one portion of these 11 and a half hours in producing or replacing his wages, and the remaining portion in producing your net profit. Beyond this, he does absolutely nothing. This has all basically been an overly complicated way of Marx saying that a reduction of one hour from 11 and a half to 10 and a half would not only reduce the total of labor time, but also reduce the total amount of constant capital the capitalist would have to invest in the first place. By using the percentage rate we looked at earlier, S divided by V, then for 11 and a half hours, five hours, 45 minutes are producing variable capital and five hours, 45 minutes are producing surplus. That's hundred percent. A reduction in one hour leaves us with five hours, 45 minutes producing variable capital and now four hours, 45 minutes producing surplus or 82.6%, hardly the complete elimination of profit. Marx notes that Senior, to his honor, later came to support the factory legislation. In this final brief section, Marx makes a distinction that the portion of the products that are representative of the creation of surplus value are known as surplus produce. Much like how the rate of surplus value is determined by its relation to the variable aspect of labor power, the relative amount of surplus produce is determined by its relation to that part of it incorporating necessary labor whether it's being produced for its use or merely being produced for the sake of being produced, for profit. The sum of necessary labor and the surplus labor, i.e. of the periods of time during which the workman replaces the value of his labor power and produces the surplus value. This sum constitutes the actual time during which he works, i.e. the working day.